and I will start the captions. Excellent. So hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, today's chaos community call. It's great to have you here. The minutes are in the chat. And it's nice to meet you, Christine, in the chat. Great to have you here. Um, and actually, I'm going to bring your question up to the to the community call today that you put in the in Slack. So um, before we get to that question, though, I'll share my screen here. And uh, today, if you could add your name to the minutes that are in the chat, and it's your favorite city to visit. So um, you know, Dubai, I've never been to Dubai. No, that's one I have not been to either. Should be some interesting ones. So please um, add yourself and, and your favorite city. Um, let's see, just for your uh, calendar, there is a new Badger orientation. It looks like a little bit late to today um, at 12 p.m. So actually just right after this meeting. Um, this is for any of you who would like to get involved in our chaos event badging program. And so this is to help kind of review applications for uh, chaos DEI events. And I'm guessing that Elizabeth will be running that session. Yeah, uh, it's not going to happen today again oh. because like Elizabeth has like um I think the Wi-Fi connection is okay. very poor, so we are moving it to next week. Okay. I, so need to I think it's the eighteenth. Nineteenth. I don't think it's the nineteenth. No. Is it the nineteenth? Yeah. Same okay. Time. Okay, great. Thanks for the, thanks, Ruth. Um, so the 19th, we're good there. So no Badger orientation today, but if you're interested, um, feel free to reach out to Elizabeth. Um, I'm sure reaching out to Ruth would be okay too, um, if you have an interest in engaging. Sean, you're dinging a lot. I know, I have to figure out how to, I don't know why it's actually, everything's supposed to be going to my external headphones. So I am a little perplexed by this, honestly. <laughs> I, I can't figure it out. So um, hopefully it stops. Okay. I'll mute myself for the moment. Okay. So um, also, I just wanted to let you know, we have the, it should be on the chaos calendar. The project badging meetings are on Mondays. I think we're going to be moving them back maybe just an hour to accommodate Ruth. But for those of you that have an interest in project badging and our work with All In, Particularly, particularly around that DEI.MD file and how we can generate reports as part of project badging. Um, those meetings are open and available on Mondays. So like I said, it should be on the chaos calendar, but I do think we're moving them back um, one week. Yeah, Kevin, what's up? Uh, was there some discussion about moving the project badging meetings and merging those with the DEI meetings? Or did yeah. we decide not to do that? No, I think we did. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, okay. I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. But for, so for, for now, those meetings will be separate. Yeah. For now, I, we have a, I think maybe we had originally merged them like around event badging and project badging. I think because it's still in that pilot phase, it's taking a little while and it might, my guess is, is that it would kind of consume the entire DEI meeting, you know? Okay on those Wednesdays. So yeah, for now, let's just keep it there. Okay, um, thanks, Kevin, but I'll check on that. Um, there was a question that came up in Slack from Christine, who's on the call here. Um, I think the way I understood the question was, and kind of Sean or everybody, is there a way to understand the impact of contributions within a project? Not just a way to understand like a volume of contributions, but but the impact that a contribution has on a project or even a gay org. Yeah, so I'm speaking from like a more uh, metric numerical um, viewpoint. Um, I'm trying to uh, implement my open source experience, my resume and my, and my job. And when I go to interviews for job roles, um, and I know that a lot of recruiters are 
big on metrics and numbers and stuff like that. So it would be helpful to know how to get that kind of data. Yeah, fair, like more than just the number of contributions you make, but also the impact of those contributions, right? Yeah, like if, like, say I read, like, I put this example in the uh, Slack, but I'll say it here. Say I revised um, the tutorial for Grim, you know, Grim more. Yep. And then after that's been like released and a couple weeks later, you go back. Oh, who was speaking? Anyway, I'll continue. Um, um, so where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, then you, um, it's a couple weeks later, and then you look back at the chart, and then you kind of see that it increased um, user um, productivity by like uh, 50%. Per percent. That's what I mean by yep. um, impact. Yep, that makes sense. I'm curious if, if Sean or Georg, if you have any thoughts. So I just had a conversation today with someone who installed Grimoire Lab and said they really appreciated the documentation and the, the FAQ and everything. So we don't measure how how much time people spent on the documentation or how they are using it. So it's it's hard to see that kind of impact. And we do have anecdotal evidence or people who give kudos to how how things look and how they're working. Um, it's it's not the metrics that recruiters might be interested in, but maybe is, there's a way you can tell a story about how you have contributed to to groom all that documentation and other places and then what people are saying about it that could work son have you come across this at all with auger i mean the when people are trying to measure the impact there's there's a subjectivity to it and you have to decide what impact looks like so on some projects i've seen critical pieces of code actually identified heuristically and the people who contributed to those critical pieces of code are viewed as having greater impact. So impact isn't, I mean, obviously the, the dirty measure, the, the lowest hanging fruit is to look at total contributions, but anytime you're looking at impact, I think when I've talked to people about that, they're looking at specific chunks of the code that are critical. Okay, so it would be in that case, it's not only, it's, I see it, Kevin, um, not just the um, number of contributions, but where those contributions are kind of occurring. Right. The, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, Kevin? You're silent. From a, from a chaos metrics position, uh, we've generally avoided uh, dealing with those individual contributor metrics. So those those types of metrics that can be used to create kind of leaderboards and you know measuring the productivity of individual contributors. Uh, for the most part, we've I think we've really avoided those um, because there are some there are some pitfalls around uh, those types of metrics. Uh, so. From a chaos standpoint, I don't think we have uh, the closest thing we would have would be the uh, uh, contributor attribution metric, uh, which is over in the evolution working group. Uh, but I, I don't think we've I don't think we've defined any metrics or models that would uh, uh, do what do what you're describing. So I would I would agree with no, you that. Uh, we Tell, tell your story about how you contributed. I think that's the best way to, to, go, to go forward with that. I'll... John? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we, I think I agree, I agree. I mean, I'm, what I said is not 
in conflict with what Kevin and Georg are saying. You know, it's um, the storytelling, I think, is a way to get at this impact. Um, well, yeah, uh, Math, I think I agree with, with Kevin and what Georg said there. You know, the philosophy of uh, Kios is to come up with metrics that helps projects to measure their health and to see some insight about their health, not about the contributors themselves. Now, if uh, we want to go into that level of meta analysis in any form of software project or any community, no matter uh, the level we are talking about, you are trying to measure it. It, you are, it will be an external kind of analysis that you'll be doing on the data to see some of uh, the activities that have been done over time. And this is not really in line with most, uh, it can be done just to make you cl be clear, but then not in this context and not even in the context of uh, a project because then it can come up with some kind of conflict. I'll give you just a brief example, then I will stop there. If you see, uh, even like when they are talking about the most uh, prolific uh, researcher or something like that in some areas, it is not the researchers who measure themselves. It's an independent body that looks their work over time, like 10 years, like five years and see the impact that those three things have commit have done to society, then they give some scores. And I don't think this is even in line with what you are saying. So I think what Georg and uh, Math and Kevin said, it's in the light direction. You know, you can tell your story from your own involvement in the community. Then you can show the projects that you have contributed to and the things you have done. That is like more than enough, it's strong enough. So that's what I want to say on that. Thanks, Armstrong. Um, I put a few notes, Christine. There's also some comments in the chat as well that are, I think, kind of um, supporting what is what, what's being talked about here, like you know, around storytelling and you um, highlighting those skills. So hopefully, this is a helpful conversation for you. It has. It has. It gave me a few right things to think about. Okay, great. All right. Um, great. Yeah, Kevin, yeah. your last comment. So the, uh, from a from a chaos standpoint, that might be an interesting uh, an interesting blog we could write out. I don't know if there I don't know if there would be a, a like a storytelling metric we could we could create, but a kind of a a storytelling blog uh, to to kind of describe how to uh, promote yourself individually. That might be a uh, from an individual contribution standpoint, that might be an interesting blog. It could even be a framework too, like like a framework of some sort, like some sort of model, just to give an idea. And it could yeah, be yeah. a flexible one too. Right on. Um, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Christine, again for your question. Um, Christina, that I've been doing the former handbook. Um, yeah, so I just want to add on like one way that I have done it personally. Um, uh, kind of what I do is I just um kind of assess my contributions to the community and see like you know from people's feedback as well. Um, from using what I the contributions in the documentation or even people interactions or things that I've done in the community, I kind of reflect on them. And then I, you know, put together ways that um, I have impacted this, maybe not the numbers, if I do not have the numbers for like kind of a sentence, especially when I put it in my CV, kind of how, um, you know, I impacted maybe an individual or the community in general. That's kind of what I do. Um, but I do agree with all even a framework will be really good because this is something that's really important. And then there are a lot of people that do not know, especially like for first time contributors that do not know that their open source contributions are you know, valuable in the or their, um, when they're you know, doing um, interviews. So that would really be great. So Kevin, 
So everybody, thank you for the nice feedback and nice conversation here. Um, Christine, if you'd like to carry on this conversation and kind of move, maybe move this forward in ways that we could think about a blogger or framework, as was discussed, that would be cool. Um, kind of keep the conversation going. So feel free to just continue the conversation on Slack as well. And that the, just the small thread in that general channel, if that works for you. Oh, sure, sure. Great, fantastic, thank you. Um, all right, so let's see, I'd like to, these are just kind of things that I had put on the agenda for today. Um, I know that you all know about our chaos regional chapters. So for example, chaos Africa, um, a couple chapters were looking at starting um, in Latin America and in the Balkans. Um, one of the things that these chapters are focusing on is amongst many things is trying to help kind of in this this open source 101 or hello world open source um, set of programs that can encourage people to get a get a better understanding of how to engage in open source broadly not just the chaos projects specifically and we've talked about uh, creating a series of courses that um, could help people in that regard. And really the motivation here is as a project that focuses on open source community health and sustainability, I think an argument can be made that you know, the, the more people who are participating in open source um, and have access to participate in open source, the better for, for all of us. And so that, so we had talked about like ever so briefly about the different types of platforms that we could use to host um, classes that could be small series of classes that people could go through freely. Um, this is with Moodle. I think we've kind of settled on Moodle. I went ahead and grabbed the chaos moodlecloud.com domain. I, I'll be honest, I have no idea how to use Moodle at this point. I'm figuring it out. <clears throat> I used Canvas plenty, and I'm guessing it's not terribly different than that in terms of setting up a course has anybody done moodle classes not taken them but set them up i've done i've i certainly know that moodle is um less it's more it's an older system it's got a lot of legacy stuff there are a myriad ways of configuring it with lots and lots of different modules so okay. it's i think i would compare it to the difference between microsoft office which is kind of what you get in a canvas and um, open office, which is kind of what you get on Ubuntu. Like a lot of the commands are the same or similar, but you're not used to it. So it's like relearning all the same things. Well, I'm in the, I'm in that yeah. process of relearning all the same things. Um, so I'll try, I have a 45 day free trial on this. So hopefully I can get something kind of, uh, you know, up and running in that 45 day period. And then if we like it, we had talked undoubtedly about this, that we would host a few, I have a few questions. I'm not sure if like, for example, I highlight small there, see that $360 a year. And I'm guessing that's 200 concurrent users would be my guess, not 200 <laughs> overall users. I don't know if you- It depends. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was 200 overall users. Okay, that I just just because it's I mean, unless it says active connections, I mean, usually the cost is accounting for the space that a user's presence takes up on the server. So if okay. you have more users, there's probably even if they're not logged in some expectation about space consumption. Okay, but I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I've, mostly I see this kind of licensing is basically for each logged in user. I mean, for each user who can log in each user that exists. Okay. Well, Slack, Slack is unusual I'll, in that they don't charge us if someone hasn't logged in for 30 days. I'll ask. I do. I sent out a note to the mm -hmm. folks there. Yeah. So I'll get some info. Because honestly, at this point, if it's what you described, I don't even think that's going to work. If we're providing free classes, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, like I a thousand that. users, we'd run out of that in no time. Like. Like what's our what's our current number on Slack? Do you, it's it's over a thousand. It's like in the eleven twelve hundred range, I believe. Yeah, I don't and, know if it uh, it sends me an email every once in a while. Okay, um, but uh, well, more to come. 
See more to come. Yeah. I, but it, the point being is that a thousand, we'd probably just run into a problem right away on Moodle. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, you're probably right. We probably would. If we're running, I was just thinking if we're yeah. running classes via the different regional chapters, that would probably. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on. Does anybody have any questions on on this? It's just kind of not a question, but a, yeah. but a recommendation in the yeah. that it's called Seven Caps. It's a great tool for. It's a tool used to create like mini courses, and okay. it's pretty accessible. People can like use it on their phone, their computer, tablet. Okay. So maybe. So maybe the course can be done there. I will. Thank you for that. No, I have not. I've never seen that. I'm putting it in. I'll take a look. Okay. Um, thanks. Thanks for that. I think we are trying to move just in terms of the platform to use an open source platform and Canvas not being that. And I'm not sure what seven taps is. Canvas is Canvas is open source. They have a repo on GitHub. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well then if if that, I mean, is there a community? Community, uh, I think they have a forum. Okay. From what I recollect, but I do know that they have a GitHub repo. Could you put that in the? I don't know if you have. Are you on the minutes? Could you put that in in the minutes there? Sure. Or in the chat one way or the other. I have never seen that. All right. Cool. Um. Let's see, I did, I wanted to move. Vinod, are you still on right now? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I did just want to kind of give an update in terms of documentation updates that we're doing. So the, I think kind of the, the long story short is as we had done many changes to, um, the website, along with some older documentation that was being provided on GitHub. Um, if you go to community and knowledge base, a lot of these topic areas, there were a, a lot that were many layers deep, or there were a lot that didn't have a lot of content in them. So um, Vinod has been working along with, with Kevin and Elizabeth to kind of really think about how we arrange our documentation, kind of this ongoing issue in open source communities, how to make sure your documentation is present and available. Um, I was hoping Vinod might have some updates. I think there's some existing PRs out there to further streamline this documentation. Um, but I we have a meeting tomorrow that we'll be taking a look at, but this should start kind of streamlining where all of our things are at and removing things that were duplicates um, and removing things that were just empty. <laughs> I think you all know the story, uh, just trying to improve this overall. So this has been quite a bit of work and I just wanted to continue to bring it to people's attention. And I think probably by the end of the week when we're, um, maybe we, when we can merge those final PRs, we'll be asking for a few people to volunteer to take a look at the documentation. Uh, to just give us some feedback on where they are <laughs> not comfortable or where they it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So there will be a call for volunteers. Yeah, I was just going to mention that question. Okay. What did you want to mention, Ruth? Yeah. I think Christine already mentioned that. Um, Christina asked about uh, how to participate in documentation, and I point this to that. Uh, this, what they're not working on. So, if 
Perfect. Um, thank you, Ruth. And thanks, Christine. Christine, there is a meeting tomorrow. If you take a look at the chaos calendar at, I think it's 830 US Central time. I'm not sure where you're located, um, but you should be able to find it on there. Yes, Chief. Gotcha. Yes, okay. it is 830. Yeah, feel free to join. I think we'll probably be walking through the PRs, the pull requests <laughs> that Vinod had done. Uh, We'll just make sure they're all good. All right, um, slowly moving along here. Uh, John, it's good to see you. How are you doing? You have something on here. Uh, do you wanna talk about it? Yes, thank you. And good to see everyone too. I participated in these calls for about a year, a couple of years ago. And then, you know, things, I guess, I don't know what happened, but life got in the way and I haven't been around in a while, but our, Developer relations, formerly known as community relations team at GitLab, has been talking a lot about you know diversity in our community, and it's going to be a big focus for us in the second half of the year. And so, I wanted to come back and kind of check in with the folks here because I know you've done a lot of work around this, um, and just get a sense of like what type of metrics people are using, you know, maintainers or or kind of other companies that are running open source projects. Um, for measuring like the demographics of their projects, like is that mostly done ad hoc or is there kind of a set of metrics that folks look at? And then, you know, I'd, I'd love to know also if there's any kind of success stories or like case studies that folks would point to. Um, you know, as we embark on this journey, it'd be great to have like models that we can aspire towards. Just a, maybe a question to your question. Is it really only about demographics or is it about like how different projects on the, is it two things? One, is it only about demographics? And then two, is it only with respect to the GitLab community or communities that are on, that are using GitLab? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think, I don't know exactly what you mean by only demographics. I'm not sure, like, you mean like other other facets of diversity or like folk? Yeah, other facets around DEI that you would have an interest in. So like in a community, we have been working on a project with All In around, in, I'll show it to you here, but asking projects to think about things with respect to say newcomer experiences or asking projects to think about things around um, paths to leadership. So it's not just about demographics, but how you express um, different metrics within your project and how you speak to those. So that's what, that was the demographics question. You know what I mean? That it's not just about demographics, but it's also how a project is attentive to other things as well. Yeah, so I think where we're at right now is focusing on primarily on demographics. However, I, you know, I think learning from you like it, it, and knowing that those types of experiences you know that newcomer experience the path to leadership like um are also important like uh, the scope is still very much you know in for, in formation so we can um certainly include those other things and then to your second question you know primarily focused on the GitLab community to start but if there's ways that we can you know leverage what we're learning or building to support the other communities that are using GitLab for open source, then we'd certainly look at that as well. Okay, thank you for that. Kevin, I see your hand up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out, so in, in addition to the uh, the work we're doing uh, with All In and GitHub, uh, a lot of the chaos demographics work is actually in collaboration with the uh, Open Demographics Project, so we're not uh, we're not really kind of reinventing the wheel with uh, you know uh, demographics uh, metrics. We're we're taking our cue from the uh, the Open Demographics Project, and I can okay. I can put a link to that in the uh, chat. Sophia already did it. Thanks, Sophia. Oh. I also can add that Amy Marish is running the community survey at the OpenStack or Open Infra Foundation. Um, we have worked with her 
um, she is part of chaos and we've worked with her on the questions for many years now. So there are some resources to look at and then also the Apache Software Foundation, the Petrucci and Oregon State University have helped the ASF run community survey um, twice now, 2020 and 2022. So those survey questions are also all open and like what Matt was saying, the focus is not just on capturing who's in the community, but also getting feedback on barriers to contribution and a bit more on the background of the participants and how they're perceiving the community. Thanks, Georg. I actually missed the first part of what you were saying before you got to the Apache Software Foundation bit. Do you mind repeating that part? Uh, OpenStack or Open Infra, Amy Marish is running the um, the survey. I don't know how often she runs it, um, but there are resources and we've helped or between chaos and OpenStack, we've worked on the survey questions. Thanks. There are a lot I of guess, things here. <laughs> yeah, I guess as a follow-up, do you think it's relevant to attend the diversity uh, equity and inclusion working group meeting. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yep. And that, um, and that conversation at the beginning too, around like the badging work we're doing, like I, this is all, I think it's all tied in with really what you're asking and it may not be like perfectly aligned, but I think there's a lot of conversations that would occur in the DEI meeting that would <laughs> be extremely useful to you. In the application. Awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, I'm happy to be a fly on the wall as well and just kind of, you know, learn through osmosis. So I'll plan to attend that meeting as well. Right. It's tomorrow at 10 o'clock U.S. Central, I think is when it is on Wednesdays. Georg, do you have links to the surveys? The surveys that you talked about? Let me Google that. Okay. I can Google it too. I just didn't want to do it while I'm <laughs> running the thing, sharing my screen. I have this acute paranoia of searching for things while everybody's watching. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, great. John, I hope that helps and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, very helpful. And thanks for everyone who contributed and shared links and things. Okay. It's it's a it's a little premature, but there's also the the DEI working group, and, and specifically uh, Anita has a uh, kind of a, a survey interview project that's looking to be pretty interesting. So, in the in the future, those those results should be uh, uh, just to uh, to make a point that the uh, that working group is very active. So, I don't Anita, would you like to talk about your the, the project you're working on? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, just to add to what Kevin has said, we have been working on um, a DEI survey to help us understand the impact of these metrics we have developed so far in um, open source communities, and especially those individuals in these communities that identify as underrepresented. So um, we are currently at the analysis stage, but we're trying to see how some of this feedback we received can be used to improve on our existing metrics or even develop new metrics that can be added to what we currently have. And um, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Anita. Thanks for the update. And also thank you for whoever is taking notes. I'm going to make a guess that it's Georg. It's not. Who is taking notes? 
So at GitLab, we all take very detailed notes of all of our meetings because we have an asynchronous culture and it's not expected that everyone attends the meeting. So people can read it after if you take really good notes. And so um, that's just a habit I'm in and that will be helpful for me because I can share these notes with my colleagues who are all also interested in this material. So you were taking notes. Yes. That's what he's saying. Yeah, I think I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Super helpful. Um, and then I'll just, I'll maybe just add one thing here at the end too, uh, John. We, I mean, we'd love to to work with GitLab on questions that you have. So, you know, please do attend and, you know, we'd love to, to foster that partnership for sure. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that people have? Um, well, thank you. Ildico got the other survey. I'll put this in the chat as well, or in the, there's the open infra survey as well. Thanks, Ildico. All right, we got everything. Um, everybody, I think we're at the end of the agenda, unless somebody has anything pressing or even not pressing that they would like to talk about. If you're in Portland, have a great time at FOSSI. I don't know if anybody's going here. Um, if, if you're at home, have a great time there. Yeah, yeah, enjoy your home. Enjoy Almost wherever good. you are. <laughs> yeah. For the rest of your time. All right, until the, the next time we see you or talk to you on Slack, um, have a great day, everybody. Yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. All right, bye. Bye.